Hey, how's it going everyone? GC Performance here, back with another video. Today I have for you guys this beautiful Tarmac S-Works SL7, but today's a little bit different video. Uh, this is gonna be a video of me showing you what can go wrong if you neglect your bike and don't clean it. Uh, just to let you guys know as well, this is one of my good buddies here. Uh, he has the money to afford a really nice bike, which this is a really nice bike, but he rides it every day. Uh, 35, 40 miles a day. Uh, he has a good paying job, so he's able to get on the bike and uh, ride it almost every single day. I think he rides like five, six days a week. Um, but he does not clean it, he doesn't maintain it. He just brings it to me every six months or so to do it. So this is after six months of doing it without any kind of wear or any kind of uh, at-home maintenance, no lubing, no cleaning, no spraying with the hose. Uh, and taking consideration too, this is South Florida, so there is a lot of uh, corrosion, there's a lot of salt in the air, there's a lot of moisture in the air. So this stuff definitely kind of gets like hyper exposed to this. But I just kind of want to point this out to you and then I'm gonna do a cleaning on it. I'll show you what it looks like afterwards. But this is what his cassette looks like after riding it. And it's bone dry. There's like no lube on here. I mean, literally, it's just it's just metal on metal or, or you know whatever it is on there. Um, and it's just a lot of resistance. So he's saying even even the springs where the the derailleur is right here, you can see it's starting to corrode or get a little bit of rust on there. Um, and you can hear it when you're pedaling. It sounds like a bird cage. You know, you can hear like the squeak, 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 squeak. Also, you can see the tires getting gashed up like crazy. A bunch of water and moisture marks on the front of the fork, the corrosion on the front, and then we'll go to the brake calipers. Look at there. Look at the rotors in the back. You have the, the rust in the back of the rotors here on the SRAM Red, the flat mount disc brakes. And you're going to see the points of corrosion where they build up where the water just kind of sits on top of it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this bike. I got a muck off pressure washer they sent out a while ago. I'm just going to do like a quick cleaning, which I'll show you guys kind of what I do for this. Um, I'm going to take off the chain of the cassette. I'll put it in a dunk tank. I'm not going to film all of it because I want to do a cleaning video one of these days where I just show you guys what you guys get at a bike shop for $60, $120. Kind of show you guys what you're paying for, but I'm gonna show you guys, it's gonna be a quick wash and I'm just gonna re-lube everything and kind of hit where we need to hit. But even on the front disc as well, you see right there. But yes, that's what happens if you don't, if you if you ride, you get caught in the rain, this is what happens to your chain. It starts to get rusty if you don't re-lube it. Especially here too in South Florida, a big thing is, is that a lot of people stay in their big chain ring. So when they go to shift down, this spring gets so used to being stuck in place that it can't move. So I'm gonna go ahead and work that in as well. I'll spray some aerosol lube uh, at the pivot points on the springs. Same here with the rear derailleur, boom, 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 boom. And uh, yeah, we'll make this thing look brand new again, I promise you. So I'm gonna do the video of me kind of cleaning it real quick, kind of just like showing you where I spray at. And then uh, I'll show you guys where I lube it and we'll go from there. All right, so we got our dirty bike underneath our little kind of bay area where we do our like cleaning. Um, so I'm gonna, I got the muck off pressure wash with the bike cleaner. Uh, this is a little bit less PSI or a little bit less pressure than a normal pressure wash. Like this is one that we had from Ryobi. Um, you know, I would definitely recommend if you're a regular consumer, don't use a pressure washer from a company like that because you can damage your bike. It's a lot stronger than something like this. So this is a one made specifically for bikes. They do sell it uh, for consumers to buy. I think it's like 270 bucks. I don't think you actually need one, but uh, if you really want to be like, you know, super anal about cleaning your bikes and stuff like that, you can get it, they have different attachments. They also have a spray attachment where you can like a foam sutter that goes on it that you can put inside the pink stuff. Um, personally for me, I don't really like this. It uses way too much for what it is. So what I'll do is I'll take a little bit of the drivetrain cleaner and you wanna be careful with this stuff because you don't wanna get on your disc and rotors. Never spray any kind of degreaser or lube on your calipers or on your rotors. That's the worst thing you can do. So what I do is I spray it right here on the cassette. I'll spray it on your derailleur as well. I'll spray on the front derailleur. And anytime you ever spray any kind of degreaser on a bike, you wanna make sure you go ahead and re-lube it afterwards. But I'll take like a brush right here and kind of agitate this area. You know, just kind of get that crust off there. Make sure everything looks nice. Kind of get it right here. And just kind of make it so it scores it off a little bit so that way when I do spray, it's gonna come off a little bit easier. Uh, get on the cage get right here and you can get really into this if you want obviously if it's your own bike you can you can take as many, much time as you want but I'm just gonna do what we need to do for efficient now I got our pink muck off cleaner and this stuff works for the whole bike I'm gonna spray this on the frame and after I spray this on here I'm just gonna let it sit but I'm pretty uh, I'm pretty loose using with this I spray this over everything I get this on the rotors everything again I don't spray like crazy but Anywhere where there's visible dirt, um, I'll spray on there. 
I got the rims with it. And again, I don't recommend you doing this at home because I'll take this out afterwards and clean the rotors and stuff like that. Uh, Muckoff does actually sell disc brake covers if you wanted to do that. But yeah, and then I let that sit on there for a little bit. I get my hose on. And I will do a video actually one day, like I said, where I have you guys, I want to do a video where I show off me cleaning the bike fully. Like if you were to bring in what you get for $60 at a bicycle tune-up, like we charge $70 or $60 for a bicycle tune-up. I want to show what you actually get as a consumer going to the store, like a walkthrough process. Uh, that process for 60 bucks, we don't actually spray your bikes down. We do everything hand clean. And then we have a $150 option where we actually remove the bottom bracket, the cranks, the chain, the cassette, uh, put it into a dunk tank, do all that stuff like that. That'll be for another video one day, but we got our pressure washer on, or we got the water running. You always want to turn the water on first. Purge out all the air. Turn it on. Now, we just want to hit it. Now again, be light with it. Don't stand right up close with it. You don't got to stand right there and spray it directly up against the frame. Just use it to loosen up the dirt. Because I'm going to take this afterwards. And once I take this afterwards, I kind of spray off all this kind of heavy coated sweat, sand, and corrosion. I'm going to wipe it down the cloth and everything. And yes, keep in mind too, when doing this, your headset bearings will wear out faster, your bottom bracket will wear out faster. Um, but it depends on how, like I said, how responsible you want to clean your bike. Everything you do to it will have kind of an advantage or disadvantage. This will clean the bike much faster, but disadvantage is your bearings will probably run out quicker. So keep that in mind. And then when it comes down to drivetrain with spraying any kind of hose, never spray this way towards the back of the rotor. I mean, I know some stuff's gonna get down there, but always go down this way. that's electronic e-tap with the batteries on there that all that stuff is water resistant you don't have to worry about it no you want to just, <laughs> you just want to <laughs> no i'm just kidding i'll just kidding I'm just kidding. There we go. Now what you do in the next couple minutes is crucial because of the fact that we want to get this thing dry, obviously, so we're gonna let it drip dry for a little bit, but we want to get lube on there as quickly as possible. So we're gonna let it dry, then we'll take a rag to it, kind of still clean out the chain, get set a little bit. And then we're going to put lube in all the spots that necessarily move externally. We don't really have to worry about relubing the bearings on the inside because they're all sealed, supposedly. Um, but yes, we want to make sure we get lube on everything that was touched by the degreaser, by cleaner, and by water. That way we don't have to worry about corrosion on there. So I'm going to turn this off. I'll get a bike inside and we'll go from there. All right, so as we can see already, it looks way better than what it was. There's no real brown residue on there. There's no as much on the chain. I'm gonna take a rag again, like I said, and kind of clean all that stuff off. But what we wanna do is get as dry as possible, and then we'll go ahead and restart applying lube to it. But it looks much better than what it was from the get-go. So let's go ahead and put some lube on there and get it all cleaned up, and I'll show you guys what it looks like. All right, so I have your MO94 by Muckoff. Um, and what I do is I actually take this and I spray it right on top of the front derailleur. Any kind of pivot point that moves, like here, there's a little spring in the back, any kind of rivet back here as well where the movement points, because we just spray down with degreaser and water. I just take a rag, and I'll spray here. I'll soak it in it, and then I'll shift it back and forth to make sure that it's not gonna freeze up over time, because that's one of the biggest things that happens. There, and then right here, there's a little spring in the back as well, you can hit that. And if you want, press up on the front. Let that work in, let that sit, and we'll do the same thing the rear derailleur right here. Pivot points here, pivot points here. And again, you wanna have like a rag behind it to catch it because you don't wanna spray on the rotor. 
the spray there. Spray in the back again. These bearings are sealed as well, but you can spray in here. Oh, it's not gonna hurt it. Let that kind of sit. And then we're gonna shift that up and down. And then what I'll do after that, typically, I'll take this rag with some ML94. Like that, see? Yeah, see? Take it like that. And I'll grab the chain right here. I'll kind of just pedal backwards. Just to get that initial sheen and dirt and water and gunk off there. And then I'll go ahead and use like actual lube on there. But I want to get whatever kind of surface corrosions on top of there off. Yeah, I'm gonna take a loop to it. Yeah. And then once I get all that worked up, I'll shift it up into here. And when you spray the pivot points, you wanna make sure you shift it all the way up and down to kind of work that in as well. So I'll kind of take this rag, work the cage, kind of, you know, again, wipe all that stuff off there. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna put it into the middle gear get a lubricant of what we want. So remember this is bone dry right now, but and for today's lube, what we're gonna be using is muck off dry lube. I'll take this, just kind of work into each link. Go slowly, kind of do a full rotation right there. All right, so we supply the dry lube and now we'll kind of work it down and then up. And obviously if you don't have a stand, then you may want to go around the block and shift it up and down to get that lube worked in there. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to let that sit for about a couple minutes, make sure it's dry, and I'm going to wipe off the excess. And now for the final thing, I'll drop it into the smaller chain rings of each one. I'm going to remove the wheels, and we're going to clean the frame, and then clean the wheels. Take a six millimeter Allen key, bada boom, bada bing. Remove the wheels, all right, done. Take that out. Take another six millimeter Allen key, remove this one. All right, so we have the bike in the stand. I'm gonna use this muck off bike protect. That's what I choose to use. I'll just spray this on a rag. I'll pull over the bike. We'll get it going. And a little bit of a word of advice that bike protect that I showed you, it does make a matte frame very glossy, but it doesn't stay like that forever. So it's just a nice little finish, but it makes the frame look really clean. Just gonna spray on everything, go through the whole bike. So here's a good example. See how that's kind of matte right now got a gloss just gives it a different look to it you know i think it comes out clean and it puts over it protects against uv rays everything boom bing bang boom you can get real crazy about it you can remove the bottle cage if you wanted to and get behind there all right got the wheels back on the bike the bike is all cleaned up it looks good now these wheels are matte this is one of my favorite things to do. So I'll get a rag, spray the bike protect on top of here like this. It's kind of like an instant gratification because of the fact that it actually looks cleaner when you do it. So it's like a matte color. Now you kind of just go ahead and wipe and be sure not to get anything on the rotor, obviously. But you're just going around the whole rim and making it from matte to gloss. And you can see the spots you go. Once you get that side, you're going to touch the tops. And again, it's very easy with a bike stand, but you can flip the bike over if you wanted to. We're going to get all the top of the rim. And then we go to the other side. And also, we hit the spokes too. Spokes, nipples, everything. We want to make sure it looks good. And it's going to come out nice. So. I'm gonna go ahead after this and we're gonna put the bike back outside and we'll show you what it looks like. All right guys, so we just finished up the cleaning. Uh, everything went good. 
and I just basically use, you know, uh, you, I use a muck-off pressure washer, which you really don't need to use. You can just use a regular, like a like some some kind of water system with some kind of pressure, like a hose or something like that. Uh, I use some muck-off product, like the aerosol spray, the MO94, um, the dry lube, and then also the bike protect, which you can use any kind of lube. I mean, it doesn't need to be muck-off. Anything works good. You just need to generally maintain your bike. But as we're gonna see, you know, I just kind of ran with the pressure washer and just cleaned it with a little bit of a uh, of lube and also of the dunk tank, or not dunk tank, just like a aerosol spray, but a lot of the rust that's stuck on there is, is just cosmetic now. It's just from being unmaintained for a little bit. But in terms of efficiency, it doesn't tweak. It doesn't tweak anymore. It works well, shifts, there's no more skipping gears. And that's one of the telltale signs that you know you need to relube your stuff is when it starts sounding like a bird in a bird cage, when it's tweeting out like a bunch of like, it just sounds really squeaky. That's a main sign. Um, I could probably take this off and put it into a dunk tank or something like that, but still, uh, that's that's more just like cosmetic, and that happens a lot in Florida. I mean, that's not uncommon to see. So it's unfortunate to see it get like that, but the bike now runs efficiently. It looks good. The wheels came out great. I put that kind of like glossy finish on there. Same with the paint job on there. It came out really, really well. I'll show you on this side too. You can see it kind of dropped its bikes a couple times, but in terms of efficiency of the bike, everything works good. Everything is just more cosmetics now. But you can still see on the rotors back here, that, that that rust and they're just pitting, but I cleaned the brakes on the side here a little bit. But yeah, it came out really well. And again, the stuff that makes the matte bike frames gloss is called the uh, Muck Off Bike Protect. It only lasts for a little bit, it'll dry up. But I think it gives it a nice little different finish look. But yeah, that's gonna do it for this video guys. Let me know what you guys think. If you guys have any questions, leave them down in the comment section below. If you guys enjoyed the video, please leave a like. and. Uh, Thank you guys so much. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.